days, and that is the line that the Cats have on their minds tonight as they take on the Highlanders of Radford. Hi again, everybody. Dave Baker alongside the Wildcat All-American Kyle Macy. Mace, a great trip up north for these Kentucky Wildcats. They come home tonight for four in a row, nine of their next ten, including some big basketball games right here in Rupp Arena. Well, it's always good to be back in Rupp Arena to get that home crowd. And you could see maybe by the Old Dominion game, some of the players looked like they were just kind of waiting for that airplane ride to get back to Lexington. So good to get back in the home spirit and get that home run like you talked about, nine of the next ten. Whether it's uh, our own kids or young basketball players, they can be kind of up and down. And sometimes you got to look to that older child to lead the guys threw a rough patch, and that's what happened with Darius Miller. Yeah, he's played very well in that tournament, especially the last game. And the younger players really kind of do look to him for that uh, self-assurance and that calmness, and he really provided a spark in off the bench and performed very well. And it's interesting. John Calipari still tinkering with that lineup. He, we will see whether or not he continues to bring him off the bench or whether he puts him into the starting lineup. And I think that speaks to the versatility of this team. There's so many different options. Some games it may be one player. The next game it may be somebody completely different. But that just talks about how deep and how good this team really can be. I think it also also speaks to the kind of young man Darius Miller is that a guy who would like to be starting doesn't mind to come off the bench as long as it's for the best of the team. We should have a good one here tonight between the Cats and Radford. We've got the starting lineup and the opening tip when we come right back. Back at Rupp Arena in downtown Lexington the night before Thanksgiving when so many are on the road and traveling. 23,000 plus here to see the Cats Take on the Highlanders of Radford. Time to take a look at the starting lineup. First of all, for the aforementioned Highlanders who come in here with a record of three and three. By the time they finish this game tonight, Radford, Kyle, will be only one of two teams, San Diego State, the other one, that have played as many as seven games in this young season. There you see their lineup. And on the other side, for the Wildcats of Kentucky, will there be a change in the starting lineup? No. Darius Miller will come off the bench once again. I like that, Kyle. Well, I think that could change throughout the year, but you're right. A chance just to get to Dron Lamb going a little bit. You know, he talked about his motor, motor wasn't really working uh, right up to speed to start of the last game. So give him a chance to see what he can do. Miller doesn't seem to be bothered coming in off the bench. The lineups are set, and we're back with the opening tip. Been a minute. Filed into Rupp Arena here in Lexington as we get you set for Kentucky and Radford. And the third member of our broadcast crew is Rob Romley. Robert? Dave, the UK healthcare injury report, and there are no injuries to report for the Kentucky Wildcats. You know, John Calipari was asked at his brief news conference yesterday about physical play in games and in practice, and he said the games are more physical. He hasn't kept it as physical in practice, said he didn't want to get anybody hurt, and there is no one hurt right now. That's the UK healthcare injury report, Dave. Back to you. Thank you, Robert. Kyle, we talked about it in the pregame show for folks who didn't hear it. You were at practice yesterday. John Calipari really got after him a little bit. Today at the shoot-around, he reeled him back in. He said some of the stuff he was getting him on, uh, getting on to him for was his fault, and he really tried to get these guys in terms of having their minds right for this stretch of four in a row here at home nine out of the next ten. Yeah, and one other thing, too, we have to remember that this Kentucky team doesn't really have 14 players uh, in the course of practice that can be out there physical. I mean, it's a limited number of players, so they got to go kind of walk that line, if you will, how hard to go. But do want to be more aggressive during the course of a game. Gary Maxwell throws it up, and Kentucky in the home white controls the opening tap. Cats expected Radford to go zone. They start out in a man-to-man. Nice move by Jones on the baseline. Yeah, that's the aggressive play that I'm sure Coach Kyle Perry is happy to see, getting the ball going right to the basket. Kid Gilchrist with the steal. Yeah, jumping right into that full court pressure, getting a quick trap, coming up with a loose ball. And R.J. Price of Radford is called for the foul. There you take a look at head coach Mike Jones. Jones, a former assistant, if he looks familiar, the former assistant to Dennis Felton when he was at Georgia. Felton now the head of player development for the San Antonio Spurs. As Jones goes off glass, he's got all four of Kentucky's points. Again, being aggressive with the basketball. Doesn't mean you have to shoot every time, but be aggressive and read the play. Cats go full court pressure and create the second turnover in as many possessions for the Highlanders. Here's Jones again. Why not? Up and under. Davis stays with it. 
and had it knocked away. There you talk about the lack of strength sometime. Anthony Davis, again, not really bending his knees enough to get down and explode up to the basket, able to come away with the, the uh, deflection. Bradford gains possession. Smith, and there's Shira with it for Bradford. Young basketball team, this Radford team. Eight new players, six freshmen, three guys named Smith. That ball batted away. Davis comes out with it. Teague for three. It didn't get it to go down, but it was a good look. Nice little kickback by Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Bradford wanting to be patient offensively, get some good looks in the basket, but they've got to be able to make those shots as a team only shooting 37% from the field and in the 20s from beyond the three-point line. So they run some good stuff, get some good looks, but now they just got to be able to knock those shots down. That's Chance Smith with the basketball. Jareel Smith out on the court as well. Shot clock at two. Price doesn't see it. Excellent defense by the Wildcats. That sometimes will inspire your offense as well. You get a good defensive stop, gets a little fired up, execute better on the offensive end. First sub off the bench is zero. Daniel Mitchell, you see right there, 6'3", 185 pounds senior from Blacksburg, Virginia. Checks into the Radford lineup. Gilchrist had it knocked away. And the Cats take it right back. Oh. And then throw it right away. Yeah, if you're going to miss that pass, you've got to miss it long so it'll go out of bounds. The team can't get a fast break coming right back at you. Cats run again, and now Teague sets the offense. Yeah, right into offensive break. Good job by the point guard. A lot of contact there. No foul. Here's Chance Smith. And there is no second chance. For Radford. Tempo up and down. Team's not able to finish it. That's one of those reads right there by Marcus Teague. It's going to the basket. No one ever came over to give some help. Took it all the way to the backboard. Brian Darden, 6'1 freshman from Hampton, Virginia, checks in to the Radford lineup. And you hear the applause as Darius Miller comes into the Kentucky lineup. Jaron Lamb goes to the bench, and John Calipari not pleased with his effort. And interestingly enough, during the warm-up period today when he was getting stretched out, Kyle Macy asked Jaron Lamb. <laughs> asked if his uh, motor was running. <laughs> and apparently it's not running hot enough for John Calipari. Well, and again, a luxury of having a Darius Miller able to come right in just like a starter. Won't miss a beat. Davis. They say that's a charge. Kind of a tough call because he's not really turned around. Has to have a place to get his feet set on the ground. Jareel Smith with the nice defense. First foul against the Cats. And after getting two quick buckets, Kentucky is stagnated offensively. Kentucky defense players down in position, though much more active and aggressive. Darden double dribbled. Constant pressure out front by Miller forces the turnover. It's the fifth against the Highlanders. Kentucky has kicked it away twice. Kid Gilchrist misses everything. And by any measuring stick, a little bit of a choppy start for the Cats. They go to the bench and try to regroup with a 4-0 lead. A lot more basketball action coming up on the UKIMG Sports Network, including Saturday night as the Cats take on Portland. 
7 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. A lot of folks after Thanksgiving meal and Black Friday will then do a doubleheader. Commonwealth Stadium for a 12-20 kickoff on Saturday. Regular season finale against Tennessee. And then home basketball at 7 o'clock here at Rupp Arena. Kentucky only two of seven from the field so far, Dave. It's a lot of those shots have been outside the 16-17 foot range. See if the cast can execute a little bit closer to the basket and get some baskets to go in. There you see that shooting. Kentucky hit their first two. They've now missed six in a row and gone just about four minutes without a field goal. Ooh, and Teague looked like he took a high dribble but got away with it. Well, again, driving to the basket, just reading the defense, not trying to do too much. Chance Smith off the curl, a little weave out front. And there's Jareel Smith. Kentucky's gone man-to-man -man the whole way. Long three won't fall for Chance Smith. And Kid Gilchrist got turned around. Yeah, I got to take care of that basketball. Anthony Davis just anxious to get that outlet pass and threw it to the wrong side of Kid Gilchrist. You know, I think we're going to see a lot more of this, Dave, as the season progresses. Teams that are playing against Kentucky, they kind of run a uh, little superfluous offense, if you will. The superfluous? Use, yeah, use a little 15 seconds or so. Just kind of get some movement, not really trying to score. And then once the shot clock gets down, try to go to the basket. Just to take some time off the clock. How many times did you ever use superfluous in a scouting report? <laughs> Mitchell. Kid Gilchrist has been really active. That's no surprise. He's been that way since the first time he stepped on this floor. Here's Wiltshire. Here comes the hook. And he got his own miss. And just that extra length. Almost able to tap that in without even leaving the floor. But the shooter knows best if the ball is going to go in or come out. Responded very well. What Wilcher lacks in elevation, he makes up for in wingspan. That shot wouldn't go down for Mitchell as he put it up over Wilcher. Here's Miller for three. Somebody's got to go to the offensive glass, though. Darden. Couldn't get the roll, and Radford still without a bucket. And what we're seeing is Kentucky is contesting every shot. Nothing easy for Radford. Nice move. Really good body control and a nice job of protecting the basketball by T. And you see, you only dribble the ball maybe three times max. If it's not there, then get rid of it, move, get your teammates into offense. Darden launches the three. Kentucky on a 10-0 run, all 10 have come in the blue area of the paint. Jones lost it. And as we mentioned, this is a young, young Radford team that has just thrown it away for the sixth time. Well, that last play by Kyle Wiltshire, just getting his balance, going to the right-handed hook, and uh, felt like it wasn't going in, fouled with it, got the right-hand tip. Marcus Teague now goes to the Kentucky bench. So it's Wiltshire, Lamb, Eloy Vargas in as well. Along with Anthony Davis, who's back in there, and Darius Miller. So it'll be Lamb at the point. Wiltshire tried to go inside. And it goes off the hands of Blake Smith, the third of the three Smiths on this Radford team who's just checked in, Blake Smith, a 6'4", 175-pound junior from Charlotte. The team's doing a good job of scattering reports against Kentucky. They've seen that little handoff for the pick and roll with Anthony Davis, and uh, early in the season was getting some lobs at the rim, but now the weak side defender down on the baseline will come over and try to stop that. That's why we saw Wiltshire coming up high was going to try to drop it back down low to the post to Davis. Javante Green, number two, 6'6", 180-pound freshman from Alberta, Virginia into the Radford lineup. Boy, Lamb did not absorb that contact well. 
lucky he was not called for a travel. They still turn it over. John Calipari's spinning around like he's a top on the sideline. Well, and Marcus Teague coming back in. And what he's going to talk to him about when he gets over there, again, just holding on to the ball too long. They went for the trap. You see that, you got to get rid of it or extend away from it and open up the defense when you give the ball up. Then it'll be playing four on uh, three defenders. Instead, just kept the ball in his hand too long and lost control. Smith couldn't get it to go. Ah, don't leave your feet. See, those are the kind of plays, and that's what <laughs> Coach Alperi's again streaming at him. Come down. If it's not there, jump stop, get under control, or just keep your dribble alive and take it back out and get the team in offense. You, once you leave your feet, if you don't know what you're going to do with the ball, bad things can happen. Miller leaves his feet, and that time they get the secondary defender, Mitchell. They say he was inside that circle, and so Miller's bailed out as he draws the block. But that is one unhappy guy right there on Thanksgiving Eve. But I think probably because he hasn't seen some improvements and things they've been working on in practice. That, that high pick and roll they were working on instead of rolling to the basket, stepping out for the pop with Anthony Davis being a so-called good outside shooter in high school. Hadn't shown that yet in college, but you know he's working on it. Whistle on the inbounds. Blake Smith whistled for the foul. Welcher kind of getting walked out of the lane by not being strong, using his hips for leverage. Still worked his way back down to that low. He almost had to shoot it. Nice look from Wilcher. And that's one of those plays by Eloy Vargas that he doesn't muscle that ball in a year ago. You're right. He's made big improvements in that area. Kentucky has not been sharp, but they have scored the first 12 of this game. Well, we talked in a pregame show about how Radford has trouble scoring the basketball. They just don't shoot it very well. They've had some good looks, but just haven't been able to get it go down. Mitchell kicks it out. Here's Smith. That's not even close. Wiltshire with a rebound. And just a lot of really shaky decision making right now. I guess the best way to put it is this team is just not in sync. Here's Miller. Even that, you know, going up against Blake Mitchell, he draws the foul, but that's a guy that Darius Miller ought to be able to go by and finish over. Yeah, and we'll talk about that when we come for break, because I have a definite opinion about that, but I need some time to tell you about it. How about we do this? We'll take a break okay. and we'll come back. All right. Kentucky with a 12-0 first half lead. It's not been pretty. The Cats have turned it over five times, Radford seven. Kyle, we talked about how choppy it's been for Kentucky, and I think this was an example of play that Darius Miller, I believe, should have finished. Well, and I think he would on a normal situation or in a big game, uh, but he did draw the foul, so let's give him credit for that. But no now, question. What I was trying to get to, though, I, as a coach, there are a lot of decisions you have to make, and I think right now at this point in the season, one thing Coach Calipari is concerning himself with, and that's why I thought they had a pretty hard practice yesterday. I mean, they were going at it full force. Normally not something you'll do uh, the day before a big game, but I think he understands this team is a lot more talented than Radford, and if even if they're not 100% fresh and their legs aren't got a lot of bounce in them, that they're still going to be able to come out with the win, but he can use that practice session and then get them motivated to work through this game almost like a practice session. And so that's why we're seeing them maybe not as fast and as quick and as smooth as you talked about being choppy out there on the floor. Here's the other thing. Psychologically, he's got to work with these guys a little bit. I mean, especially all these yep. young guys. You know, everybody else, campus is closed down for the first time. Everybody else going home to see their families for Thanksgiving. And these guys, I'm, I'm sure we'll get a good meal tomorrow, but they're going to be practicing and getting ready for Saturday game. Well, you're exactly right. And, and mentally even going into a game, I, I, you know, he's more comfortable, I'm sure, yelling at his team and maybe getting on some of the players leading up to this game than I'm sure next week when they play uh, North Carolina after a couple games. Uh, they'll, he'll be very positive. They're going to feel real good about themselves and come out and play with a lot of energy for a game like that. That was Jonathan Edwards, number 23 out of... Queens, New York with a basketball right now who's just checked into the Radford lineup for the first time. But I will say this, though. Even though they, they don't seem to have that real hop in their step, I mean, they're still digging in defensively. They are. They're very active. And that's a good sign because, you know, that's what you can kind of 
set your foundation with. The offense may go up and down, but if you've got a good solid defense, and this team should be a good defensive team, the way they can shot, uh, block shots and the, their quickness and their speed. It was, so either, it was either Penn State or Old Dominion up at the Mohegan Sun that they held without a field goal for about 11 minutes. Well, and a lot of people thought, you know, oh, they should have blown to Old Dominion now, but now Old Dominion is has a good tradition of basketball, and that coach does an outstanding job uh, just controlling tempos of the game and makes it difficult for teams to play. Blake First basket of the night comes from Blake Smith at just over 10, and 10 minutes, 20 seconds to play as Edwards gets the block at the other end. So Kentucky holds Radford without a field goal for the first nine and a half minutes of the game. Yeah, and, and Blake Smith's a player had a high ankle sprain early, so he'd averaged about 24 minutes a game, 23 minutes a game last season. Had only been playing about 12 or 13 this year, but now starting to get a little bit more healthy. Nice ball fake by Miller, but he really didn't get squared up on the shot. That was a pretty pass, though, on the follow from Terrence Jones, and perhaps that finish will get Anthony Davis going. Well, again, just being aggressive that time, Terrence Jones getting the rebound and going right back towards the basket, pulls the defense, opens up that lob. Nice. Teague with a steal on the two. And he has exceptionally quick hands out there, pressuring the basketball. Although at times he has to be a little bit careful because he doesn't want to pick up a foul. You know, he went down pretty hard in practice yesterday. I, I was, I'm surprised to see him moving as quick. He almost gets another steal. It looked like he kind of tweaked his ankle in practice, but seems to be moving very well without it. I don't know. Maybe it's those ugly gray shoes he's got on. Didn't show any ill effects of that There's at practice today. Shoes. <laughs> Maybe he's wearing those because they offer additional support to the tweaked ankle. They make them in all different colors, blue and white. Those are the shoes he had on when he tweaked his ankle. Chance Smith gets the screen. Here's Davis with a steal. And the finish. Yeah, that guy's 6'10", out denying the passing lane, dribbling up the floor and finishing. Very impressive freshman. Once he gets out in the passing lanes, Anthony Davis can certainly take care of it and make it look easy. Just had to decide which dunk he wanted to perform. Both of his buckets tonight have come on slams. Strong drive to the hole, but Javante Green can't get it to go. Kirill Smith, number four, checks back into the Radford lineup as Blake Smith gets a break. Kentucky has been able to convert their turnovers. Radford has not. And a tie up on the floor and Terrence Jones was right there next to Davis and he's the fellow who correctly called the timeout to retain the possession. Yeah, but I'm not a big fan of that call. I, you know, I'd like to see almost to make it to the point where a player has to be on his feet to call timeout because they they had possession, whatever, but the, uh, the defensive player was right there, the hand on the ball as well. Jones was on his feet when he called no, the timeout. No, Davis had the ball on the ground when right, he Right, but I think Jones around. called the timeout. Right, but he's not involved in the play. I'm, I'm saying Davis is laying on the ground. There's going for the basketball, no real possession. He's passing to Jones. If he's on his feet, let him call it. Otherwise, you call a jump ball and take it out of bounds possession here. I, that's too many times it's automatic players be going for loose ball. Even there's no possessions a lot of times. The referees will still give a team a timeout when no one has true possession of the ball. It's not as bad, though, as that rule uh, where you're flying out of bounds trying to save a basketball and you call a timeout in midair. But they changed that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but or at least maybe make the player that has the ball call the timeout. Regardless of what so. you think about the rule, it was a heads-up play by Terrence Jones to take advantage of it. That's true. Oh, Bradford comes out of the timeout in the full court press. Well, if you, nice rebound. If you remember right, uh, Mike Jones' assistant at VCU, which uh, Shock Smart likes that full court pressure and up and down game, just doesn't feel like he has the personnel yet in his first year at Radford. 
when Dennis Felton was at Georgia and he was on that staff, they were some kind of physical team. May not have been the most effective, but you knew you were going to get a physical game. Edwards had it knocked away from behind by Davis. Highlanders stay with us, Owen Javante Green with a second bucket of the night for Radford. Kid Gilchrist. See, by taking that outside jump shot, though, just let Radford off the hook. Kentucky beat the pressure, but then uh, just let him out by taking long instead of going to the basket. You had the numbers. Take advantage of it. Edwards with a stick back. And Terrence Jones wondering aloud where the help was. Yeah, three other Kentucky players just standing on the perimeter watching. Again, being the aggressive player, going to the bench, draws the foul. Kid Gilchrist will go to the line. And even though they haven't played their best, it's a 16-point Kentucky lead. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the Lexington Clinic UK player of the game. Lexington Clinic, your doctors for life. Dave Baker, Kyle Macy, Rob Bromley, Mike Canrack, Tom Beck, Tom Bickle leading our crew in the truck, our entire UK IMG broadcast team. Wishing you and yours a happy Thanksgiving weekend. I think this team's got to start playing a little better before that man has a happy weekend. But I think you all, you, you kind of have to take it all in context of, of what they're working on, what they're trying to do. And, and to be honest with you, I think they may be a little surprised they haven't seen zone yet from Radford. I, Absolutely. I know they've been working a lot against the zone, thinking that's the way every team was going to play. Offensively, slow it down, grind the game. Defensively, maybe show a little pressure, but drop back into zone. So far, Radford's been all man-to-man. -man. Quick look at the stats. Kentucky with a plus six advantage, rebounding 18 to 12, plus four in uh, turnovers to Radford, nine for them, but only five for UK. Cats are perfect from the line, four for four. These two teams have combined, though, to go 0 out of 10 from outside the arc. Teague with a steal. Now that's a shot that should have been finished. You know, you, you talk about the choppiness of this game. Uh, just, it was a great steal by Teague, gave it up quickly maybe even could have given it back to him to finish. Instead, kind of nonchalantly threw it up there on the rim. Big games you got to finish, but again, a little bit of uh, soreness, if you will, in the legs maybe from working pretty hard last couple days. Just not that same normal bounce. Long three, not even close from Jareel Smith. And Lamb can't connect when he was left all alone. Yeah, and, and Deron Lamb, the only one to touch the ball in that possession. Talk about getting everybody involved, not playing for yourself, but playing for your team. Move the ball, move yourself. Get the best shot possible, not just available shot. And Kentucky's ball movement has been so good in this season, Kyle, but Kentucky with only two assists on their 10 made field goals. Nice read that time by Anthony Davis. Looked high low down to Terrence Jones, and uh, Deron Lamb's defender was in the lane giving help, so quickly skipped the pass to the corner. Lamb, Lamb with a good read. Nice play. Kyle Wilcher checks back in to the Kentucky lineup. Anthony Davis back to the UK bench. And look out there on the floor. Three, four Kentucky players with their hands grabbing their pants, bent over. You can tell they're a little tired. Here you see the numbers on Duran Lamb. And he completes the three-point play. <laughs> You're that good cop that was in practice this morning. <laughs> He's back to the bad cop tonight. You think? Good pass. See, that's the kind of play Marcus Teague needs to make. Almost maybe even come to a jump stop, but just a simple pass that leads to a basket. Don't need to make a highlight reel. And look at the effort on defense. 
And the UK coach applauding the effort on these two trips. Edwards works on Wiltshire. And nice defense by the freshman. Alternate arrow points in the direction of Radford. They retain possession. But a good defensive stop. 17 now on the shot clock by Wiltshire. Now Wiltshire that time by not extending his arms forward, just held his ground straight up and down, was able to get that block and not be called for the foul. Had he reached over the top and then the player come up, probably would have gotten the foul called. Again, the shot clock did not reset. Highlanders have already been called for one shot clock violation tonight. Edwards on the crossover. And he gets it to go. Nice drive by Jones. And Wiltshire again with the long arms gets it to go. Number 33, Kyle Noreen. 6'5", freshman from Minneapolis. Into the Radford lineup for the first time. Edwards again on Wiltshire. And there's Noreen. A good defensive possession by the Wildcats, pressuring the ball, closing out on the shot attempt. Wiltshire. Now, that wasn't a very good possession. Again, only one pass. Four players stood around and watched the shot was taken instead of going to the offensive glass. See, just from the outside, Terrence Jones comes in, spikes it down. Play for that good volleyball team they have over on campus, too. Edwards checks out of the lineup. There you see 41, told you Shira from Ankara, Turkey. And a wild shot by Darden. And Darius Miller is called for the foul. The Highlanders go to the line when we come back here at Ruff. Then later in tonight's broadcast, we'll have our Kentucky Farm Bureau all-around coverage defensive play of the game. But Dave, here's what's going on right now with the Kentucky bench. A little bit of uh, push and tug, tussle over there. The coach is really trying to push this team to get them to play and fight through the fatigue and so that they can execute when they are tired. The team may be on the other hand saying, hey, we're up 23. We still have four minutes to play. But those are the kind of efforts and the challenges, again, from a coach. You've got to stay on your guys to get them to try to be self-motivated, to be the best they can every time they're out there on the floor. And it will carry over to the other games where maybe they're not quite as tired. And it may be a bigger game, a better team they're playing. Against. So if you can do it when you're tired, no matter who your opponent is, you know you can do it in the big games as well, just to build that confidence. Darden connects on the first free throw of the night for Radford. And maybe it's just a situation where they're not making very good decisions on offense in a lot of different situations because their defense has continued to be good. I mean, you look up, we're under four minutes to go, and they've only given up ten points. Well, and like you said earlier, too, maybe some little self-pity in the fact that everybody's leaving campus. They're here still on campus for the next few days. But you got to put that all out of your mind. Just perform every time you're called upon. Cats go to the glass three times. Can't get it to go. On the fourth. I counted five times they went to the offensive glass. Couldn't get the bucket. And then they commit the foul. Coach Calipari talking to Terrence Jones and, and Deron Lamb both about their body language. And you can tell when a, fielder, uh, a player kind of has that feel of the game. He's got a little hop, his head's up, he's bouncing quite a bit. 
Or then on the other hand, one's kind of just moping, head hanging, shoulders down a little bit. We're seeing some of that here today. Nice job by Wiltshire in the passing lane. And there's a strong finish by Lamb. I think so far, best game of his young Kentucky career for Kyle Wiltshire as R.J. Price looked like he extended the arm, but they're going to call Lamb for the foul. Well, you know what Wiltshire's done? He's played defense. Uh, yep. He's coming up with a steal, a good smart move, giving it up. Not comfortable handing the ball as well as a guard. And still continued to run the floor in case Lamb had missed. But he's gotten uh, some good defensive plays. He's got a few rebounds and then trying to play more physical. He knows if he does that, that he's going to get more minutes on the floor. Because there's no question he can play offense. He's being more physical defensively. Darden swung the arm out front. Trying to knock Teague away. Teague gets called for the foul. <laughs> it's Calipari pushing for his team to use their hands, always be active, get into the ball, the player with the ball, with having their hands close and active. Get your hands in there. He said at the shoot-around today he only wanted to be involved from the bench as much as his team needed him to be. They've needed it a lot tonight. And that was Darden who got the first three for either team of this game. Lamb thought about it and made a nice decision. Good shot fake, pulls the defense and drives by. Simple play. Well, it's oh so simple when it works. Kentucky now could have gone ahead and run their break, but now going to work on some half-court sets. As Marcus Teague pulled the ball out, set it up, nice read by Davis. And Lamb gets it to go. First three of the night for the Cats. Because his initial look was down low to Wilcher, but the defensive side, so Davis adjusted. Hit the wide open draw on Lamb. No need for anyone to fret over that consecutive three-point streak. Tennessee had that their snap the other night I saw in the game. That's because they got that Maimon kid that went for 30 points and 20 rebounds yesterday against Memphis. Mitchell on the drive. Oh. And nice hustle by Tolja Shura, who yeah. stayed with it, almost got the stick back, and then got the steal. Yeah, he had started the first few games, but just really coming back tonight, first game back, uh, another little snagging injury, but that looks pretty good out there on the floor. Approaching the one-minute mark of this first half. Well, we see his own. Jones with a catch. And after going much of the half without being able to create anything from the outside, Kentucky on its last two possessions has come away with threes. <laughs> Kentucky now will get it back with 43.4 to go. Javante Green back into the Radford lineup. Blake Smith checks in as well as Noreen goes to the bench. Radford showing a 2-3 zone. And they try to attack the gaps or even back pick. How about attacking that gap? Yeah, back pick the weak side and through the lob. Defense didn't see the pick coming. That was an attack. And Kid Gilchrist fouled on the rebound. A nice job that time by Michael Kid Gilchrist. Getting all the tough plays, the rebounds, loose balls. Here you see, just coming down the court. You can't see it on the camera, but there's a back pick being set by Anthony Davis and allows Jones to sneak behind the defense. How about that set play? 
Hit no push to come out for one and a bonus. Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Only one field goal. But that free throw keeps Kentucky perfect to the line. And it extends the lead to 30. And a 30 second timeout taken by Mike Jones, who wants to set a play. Learning experience. Wants his team to get a good shot before the end of the first half. Yeah, kind of a chess game now, too, if you're Kentucky. Do you come out and show some full-court pressure, drop back to a zone, something that Bradford hasn't seen this first half? Or do you not want to show your zone for other teams maybe going to get this film and scattering report? There you see old Josh Hopkins, one of the stars of Cougar Town. I remember when he was one of the stars at Sarah School. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually played a stint one game in particular with the uh, Bluegrass Stallions, formerly the ABA. Played one game and retired, he said. Wow. Thanks for that bit of trivia. Wasn't shy about getting his shots up, but did a good job on the boards. <laughs> that was a uh, superfluous uh, bit of information there, wasn't it? To go along with that superfluous defense or whatever it was. Clock at 15. Here comes Kentucky with a pressure. Got to be getting close to a 10 count. Yep, we saw the full court pressure. And that's that chess match you talked about. So now you've got it down to nine. This time coming out of the timeout, do you say, okay, let's take it back off, maybe go for a half court trap, try to catch him sleeping a little bit? Do we go full court man if we get a chance to run and jump? Or do we just drop back zone or just play it straight man? So a lot of options. And that's what uh, Mike Jones is trying to figure out for his Raptor team to know what play to draw up. May, in fact, give them a couple of options. If they're in man, let's do this. If they're in zone, let's do this. Again, early in the season, not sure teams have all those plays yet in their package. This time, Kentucky backs off. Smith. Might have got away with one there. Looked like Teague might have got him on the arm in the initial shot fake. Left his feet a little bit. But overall, outstanding defense by this Kentucky basketball team. They hold Radford to 14 first half points. And the Cats head to the locker room with a 31 point lead. at it as we get set for the second half of play. Between the Wildcats and the Highlanders of Radford, Dave Baker, Kyle Macy, Rob Bromley, Iron Tire, UK IMG Network crew, wishing you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully a lot of you in the kitchen getting things cooked up for tomorrow. John Calipari in the UK huddle. Try to cook up a little more offensive consistency here in the second half, Mace. Yeah, you talked about the six assist to 18 uh, field goal score, but I think also, too, he's trying to sell them on the fact, okay, the score is 0-0. Our goal is to win this game by 62 points or more. You think, well, come on, that's kind of a stomp them while they're down attitude. But you've just got to try to get each half and improve upon. There are some things that first half they did well. There are some things they need to improve upon. So you take that attitude, wipe it clean. You won by 31 points this half. Let's see if we can improve on that this second half. Mike Jones, on the other hand, said, okay, guys, we didn't shoot the ball that well, only 17% for the entire half. We know we can do that. Let's keep executing, keep grinding, stay physical defensively, do a better job maybe rebounding and taking care of the basketball with those 11 turnovers. And if they do that, then they're going to get some positive things out of this game as well. Marcus Teague controls things for Kentucky to start the second half of play, and Radford, who we thought would play a lot of zone, back in the man-to-man. Jones started the game with two buckets inside, and he starts the second half by drawing the foul. Yeah, and, and just working on some spacing there. And their man set, the little handoff, dribble handoff coming around circling, and you got to give the big guy some room down low to maneuver. If you're too close, then the defender can come back in and a double team in the low post or drop back in there, maybe deflect the ball for a steal.
Jones gets the first one to go. Cats who have been spotty at best from the stripe. Now nine for nine from the free throw line. Well, probably spending some time of their own in the evenings going back to the gym and working. They don't spend a lot of time in the uh, day, normal day's practice, but uh, they're expected to get their shots in or their free throws in if they feel like they're not comfortable with it. Again, very active with the hands on the ball. Jones with the defense. Edwards, no place to go. And now Smith with a long three, and he can't beat the shot clock. Nice acrobatic play that time by Teague just to jump over Davis. It's okay to leave your feet to do that, and knocks down the jumper. Teague gets it to go, and Kentucky has now extended the lead to 35. And how about Davis with a block? Yeah, and you see the thing, Dave, because you're so active out on the floor, you'll give up some drives, but knowing if you stay with it, you've got two guys there on the back line that can who really got, swap who the Who got ball. the block there? Take your pick. <laughs> it was coming back to this way, I would say, probably to give it to Terrence Jones. I wonder if that's like a sack where you can get a half sack. And I think at least early on in the first minute and a half, that increased intensity has been there at both ends of the court. Look at Gilchrist with a defense. Nice slip. And that time, you talked about the slip. It was Jonathan Edwards that slipped past the defense and got the Highlanders first two of the second half. The Wildcats got caught on the weak side, hugging up to their, their defense, their offensive players, instead of giving help to the ball. Turnover, and a bucket at the other end. Now, if you're giving up transition baskets to Radford, imagine what it would be with that kind of effort when you go against North Carolina, maybe one of the fastest teams in college basketball. All five players have to sprint down the floor. And look at Tolga Girard. As he got the steal, Davis with a great hustle play to stop the basket. But as soon as I talked about how well they were playing, three bad trips. Yeah, just kind of a careless pass, not enough zip on it. And Davis, to his credit, didn't go for the block up on the board, probably would have drawn a foul, but got it down low when he kind of tucked the ball on his hip. Highlanders once again have to go way into the backcourt. Rice with a long three. Girard got a hand on it, but Lamb comes out of there with it. Kid Gilchrist with a three. Three for Kid Gilchrist. Yeah, good ball move at that time. Marcus Teague just finding the open man, make the simple play. Effective. John Calipari really liked the decision that time by Marcus T. Well, it got into his hands and he got rid of it quick. So a lot of times in the earlier games, he's been holding on to the ball, whether just to hold it look or to even bounce it too many times. Davis got another block. Jones thought he was going to get the lob, but T wanted to throw it down himself. Here's another steal. Jones looked for the last time. Yeah, good unselfish play by Deron Lamb. Jones will remember that, though. He'll give him the pass back maybe the next time for an open assist. The focus is better, and so have been the results in the opening moments of the second half as the Cats stretch it out. Got more basketball coming up on this Thanksgiving weekend. Saturday night, the Cats take on Portland here at Rupp Arena. Check your local listings for the time near you on your UK IMG station. Good crowd here on Thanksgiving Eve. Everybody must have got that cooking done earlier, or else the folks that are here, they just got thrown out of the kitchen so that somebody could do their work. <laughs> I know that feeling. Do you? Yeah. Chance for folks that don't make it to Rupp Arena all the time who come back in for the holidays. Able to score some tickets as well. And they have seen a um, 
an inspired effort by this Kentucky team in the opening moments of the second half, Mace. I think so. They've come out this uh, second half and played a little bit more intensely, like you said. A couple careless passes the last few possessions, but then picked it back up, got some steals for some easy dunks. Kentucky once again extending the defense. Darius Miller, number one, back in there as Michael Kidd Gilchrist gets a rest on the UK bench. Kentucky relentless with that ball pressure. Always has a hand active, staying into the man with the ball, trying to make him feel uncomfortable. May miss a teammate that breaks open. The shot clock down to one. What a really good defensive possession by the Cats. I mean, really good defensive possession. They'll go to the line to try to convert, but everybody in great position defensively. They were able to switch and recover. It's exactly how John Calipari wants them to play. Now, if we take a look over at the bench, you'll see John Calipari talking to Marcus Teague how to handle that last two-on-one uh, situation. And, and just trying to learn, you know, that time probably should have taken the ball, one dribble, gone to the basket for a lay instead because he wanted to be so unselfish and try to get some assists. He, he kind of threw a pass into a, kind of a crowd. You kind of have to read that. If you're two-on-one, the, the defense doesn't go for you. Continue to the basket until they commit. If they commit, then give the ball up. If not, shoot the layup. And that is Kentucky's first free throw miss of the night. They made their first 10 before Jones couldn't convert, and the Cats got the offensive rebound. See in the post there how tall Anthony Davis is standing. He'd rather seem down, more athletic, kind of using his hips, create some space and some leverage. Darius Miller misfires on the catch and shoot. Miller 0 of 5 from the field. He's 0 of 2 from outside the arc. And Mitchell got behind the defense yeah, just on the loose ball. Unfortunate. Mark Stegman a good steal to come up with that. And then a heads up, knocked it right off the player's leg. Back to the player for Bradford. Mitchell, recipient of the easy basket. Nice take by Jones. Basket by Jones. Terrence Jones now with 16. And a foul is called against Deron Lamb, but it does little to slow down the Kentucky charge. The Cats pulling away. Wildcat fans, be sure to catch all the action this season as the UK women's basketball team Coach Matthew Mitchell and company, they're ranked in the top 25 as well. They're actually in the top 20 this week. First broadcast comes your way Sunday, November 27th, Mississippi Valley State. Big win earlier today over at the Coliseum. University of Nebraska, I think, Omaha. Nebraska at Omaha. And they've been posting some big numbers, too. Forcing a lot of turnovers. I know at one point the Omaha had 30 turnovers, and there was still plenty of time left to play in the game. Jacksonville State, they forced to over 40 turnovers. 81-48 the final for the UK women against Nebraska over uh, Omaha. Kentucky now 5-0 overall. And they've won 25 straight non-conference games at the Coliseum. Cats with another steal. And Miller had it knocked away. But they say that Javante Green was on the end line. You know, sometimes too, Dave, a, a coach knows that he can yell at a certain player and it won't bother that player's <laughs> play. In fact, it might help him. But he sometimes yells at that player too so the other players can hear him yelling at a player. Right. That, that player that's maybe standing there listening is not the one he's yelling at, but it may be intended for that player to hear. You'll, you'll hear uh, fans that haven't seen that before. They'll say, why is he yelling at that guy? Right. 
because he can take it. And I think Darius Miller might be one of those players. Coach Calipari knows that he's been around. It's not going to really bother him, but he'll, he'll yell at him just so maybe some of the other players can hear some of those comments. See what the Cats try to set up off the inbounds. Here's Miller. Got the ball caught on his hip just a little bit, but that was a set play and a nice finish. Darden fouled going to the hole. Darden's played a pretty good game, floor game today for Radford. Very aggressive with the basketball, hit a couple of jump shots outside. Good quickness. They say the foul occurred on the drive. So the Highlanders inbounds with 14-23 to play. Smith with a drive and he can't get it to go. Nice look inside from Teague to Wilcher. But see, that, that's not the plan. Coach Calipari talking to him about it right now for Marcus Teague. He drove into kind of a pack where there really wasn't anything there. He had Wilcher in the low post, space it out, feeding the ball or draw, give a shot fake maybe to pull the defense to him. Then it opens up the passing lane down into the post, and it gives Wilcher a chance and some room to create some activity down there. And on the dribble drive, what he likes to do is have the guys kick it back out. I think that's what he was looking for there. Wilcher double team. Passed out of it. Smith looked like he shuffled the feet, but couldn't get the jumper to go. And that time he liked the leave behind Teague. And Gilchrist, Gilchrist with a uh, chance to go to the line for two. And now the next thing we're seeing with uh, Marcus T is he, that time I thought maybe gave the ball up a little bit too early. Should try to go ahead and get into the lane, come to the jump stop at the free throw line. And now you've got that third guy on the right that he, ended, he passed the ball too, but by then he would have been in a better position to catch and go ahead and score the basket. Gave it to him a little bit further out on the floor, and uh, fortune has drawn the foul. You see on the sideline, Coach Calipari pointing out the different angles that we just talked about. It's a work in progress. I mean, it, it is. It's difficult for any freshman to come and, and play college basketball, but all of a sudden, you're not just asked to play, but you're asked to run the show and, and be the leader of this team out on the floor with the ball in your hand majority of the time. And my friend, before we uh, uh, lose sight of some perspective, this is a work in progress that's taking place while this team is now up by 43. And they're 5-0. and oh. Well, they will be 5-0 and oh after this game. Smith gets the roll. Jarrell Smith with his first bucket. And, you know, that's another thing that Coach Calipari, it, it, one of the reasons he's pushing for his team to do a good job of executing and improve upon because now they'll have this game on film as well. They'll go down, break it down. Players can see their mistakes or their good plays and continue to learn about it because some of it is physical, but obviously a lot of it is mental as well. Edwards tried to go over Wilcher, and that's at least the second time tonight that Wilcher has done a nice job of holding his ground. And did they call that a jump ball or did they call a yeah. foul? No, I think it was a jump ball. Possession arrow goes to Radford. And that's the second time the Cats have forced the jump ball. And there you see the arrow. And now they switch it over. <laughs> Price knew he was in trouble. He had not established himself back inbounds yet. So when he crossed the line, he was technically still out of bounds. Net result is a turnover that gives the ball back to the Cats. As Duran Lamb checks back into the Kentucky lineup. Terrence Jones goes to the bench with 16. His season high. Now, Lamb gets bailed out there, but that's one of those things that Calipari will talk about. That's just, 
the instinct is to give that ball up right there, but you give it to a guy in a position where he's got no place to go with it. Right. You've got to see the entire floor, not just that he has beat his defender, but by the help side defense where he is as well. That time you said uh, lucky that there was maybe a call going the other way because there was definite contact. He had no place ready to go and didn't see that weak side lamb as he was catching the ball. Miller gathered himself, got it to Wilcher, and then Wilcher out of control. And again, the coach wanted the ball kicked back out. Yeah, just one more pass and would have had a wide open jump shot for Marcus Teague. And you know, I don't think it's that they're a selfish group. I think there's just that learning process. Tried to make the pass down low. Because so there you see he wasn't even trying to score, but just being more under control, kick it back out top for the wide open three pointer. Get the easy basket. Jones and Anthony Davis checking back in at the next dead ball. Noreen checked by Miller. You have to like this defensive intensity, though, if you're a Kentucky fan. Wilcher with a rebound. I like the intensity. I like the execution, too. I mean, you can be intense on defense and be fouling people and get out of position. This is a team, uh, a young team, that's extremely talented, that understands and enjoys playing defense. Yeah, and you're right. They've not fouled a lot, which is good. Good defense without fouling. The under 12 minute media timeout here in Rupp. The Cats are rolling. Time now for our Kentucky Farm Bureau all around coverage. Defensive play of the game, Mace. Well, just an excellent team defensive play. Michael Kidd Gilchrist goes up high, gets a block. Anthony Davis would have gotten one if he had missed. Lamb runs down the loose ball, kicks it ahead to Marcus Teague, and he finishes with a two handed dunk. And that's our Kentucky Farm Bureau all around coverage play of the game. And the team defense by Kentucky has been all around outstanding. Yeah, and when you're playing good defense, getting a lot of easy baskets from your defense, that's how you can shoot 75% as the Cats are unofficially shooting this second half. And on the other side of the coin, you have got Radford shooting only 17% from the field in the second half. Excuse me, in the first half. 21% for the game. And the Highlanders are 0 of 15 from outside the three-point line. They had a long jumper in the first half. I thought it was a three. They've gone back and changed it to a two. So Radford 0 of 15 from outside the arc. And the Cats with their best free throw shooting performance of this young season. They're now 14 out of 15 from the line. Yeah, and one reason that Bradford's not been able to make a three, they've not had open looks. Kentucky now in a 2-3 zone, trying to match up a little bit. But they've contested all outside shots, Kentucky has, just like that. And John Calipari doesn't like to play zone, Kyle, but I would think with uh, teams like St. John's and North Carolina and Louisville on the horizon, he wants to give folks something else they're going to have to work on as well. Just a little extra time in practice. They have to take uh, and spend on it and maybe take away from something else they could be working on. Plus, this could be a pretty good zone team if they really want to commit to it. I think it could. Davis with his fourth block on that last swat. Three-pointer won't go for Jarrell Smith. Highlanders now 0 of 16 from outside the arc. Bradford shows a little zone here. Wow. What a great read by Marcus T. I mean, he saw the defense, I mean, just fan out and made instant eye contact with Davis. That was a big time read by T. Price, 0 for 17. What a nice stick back by Javante Green. Yeah, that's a play Kyle Wilter will, will get as he continues to get more strength as he grows into his body. That time had possession in his hands, both hands just couldn't hang on to it. That's what they worked on today during a shoot around. That is perfect execution according to what John Calipari wanted him to do. Michael Kidd Gilchrist stepped in the gap and created an open shot for T. He just got a piece of that one, I think. And then he gets out on the break. 
And that's going to be a flagrant two, I believe. He runs the floor so well and has such great hands. Gets a piece of that shot and just takes off. Good look up ahead. And almost got that one to go in. Terrence Jones with a nice pass above. They could have called that the flagrant one. They've changed the intentional to the flagrant one. The flagrant two was a play that could have caused the player to be injured. And I mean, that was certainly one of those there that could have come under that heading. Were this a tighter game? John Calipari and all the other coaches out there, as you see Vargas come in, now have the option this year of asking the officials to go to the monitor to take a look and see if it, in fact, was one of those fouls. The officials can rule on it, and if it's not one of those fouls, then for making that request, Calipari and company would have been charged a timeout. Exactly right. Or they can use the monitor to see if it was a two or a three. And find the right free throw shooter. Or who participated if there was a fight or who left the bench to get involved in that fight. We have not seen anybody really go to the monitor this year. And that's a nice drive and a two for Tolga Giraffe. This is a 1-3-1, one, one, although there's kind of some funny shifts going on, but it is leaving the open, the post wide open. Calipari expected a combination of 2-3 and a 3-2. The problem if it's a 1-3-1 one, one for Radford would be that normally you'll have one of your guards running the baseline because he can cover corner to corner. But now all of a sudden you've got a six foot, six foot one player. When he's in that rotation, they throw a high lob to Anthony Davis, 6'10", that can go up about to the top of the white square. Has no chance to defend that. What a night for the Cats in the line. 18 out of 19. And when you hope to create as much contact as Kentucky does offensively, you've got to be able to shoot well at the free throw line. Kentucky doing a very good job in the 2-3 zone. Moving, active with the hands, comes up with the deflection and steal. Kid Gilchrist put it on the deck, and the Cats get it back. I should have given that one up. Each team with six turnovers here in this second half. But Kentucky has been in control since the start. Three-pointer won't go for Darden. Cats held Radford scoreless for the first eight and a half minutes of this game. That, that's a perfect example. I'm sure he'll see that one on film. He came down the floor, thought about creating something. It wasn't there. And there's that little hesitation, extra couple of dribbles, then went in the gap and left his feet with really no place to go. Go in the gap is fine. Stay under control if you don't have it. Then back it out and get your team in offense. But you know, the best way to learn is exactly what he's doing out there on the floor playing. Just play through it. That time, a nice catch and a good move inside by Jonathan Edwards. Came to Radford via Tyler, Tyler Community College. Out of Queens, New York. 2-3 zone by Radford. So if you're a freshman, not only do you have to learn your own plays in man-to-man -man and own plays when their other team's in zone, but now you have to learn what to tell your teammates to run when uh, they're in man defense, when they're in zone defense, when they're in trapping defense, full court press. So a lot of things for a new freshman point guard. See how Vargas reacts now. Looked like he got smacked across the face by Girard. Crowd responded to it. Let's see what Eloy does. Oh, 
Good hustle by Jones as he goes to the deck. Smith. <laughs> and again, that's one of those that you ought to take a look at now. Well, but the other thing, Terrence Jones needs to understand, okay, we've got a big lead. If I get the ball, I'm taking off from two feet. Yeah, I'm going to put him in the, in the front row if he tries to foul me that hard. That away, Mace. I like that. Cats rolling as we head to a timeout. Kentucky on top, 74-28 here with 6.45 to go, and it's time now for the UK Healthcare Injury Report, and nothing to report tonight. A couple of cats going down hard under this basket over the last couple of minutes. First, there was Anthony Davis, and that was a flagrant one foul. Uh, Terrence Jones also hitting the deck underneath the basket here just a moment ago, but nothing to report on the injury front. That's the UK Healthcare Injury Report. Dave, back to you. Thank you, Robert. And a good thing that there has not been anything to report this season. Handful of guys playing a lot of minutes, and they're spreading the distribution around as well. Five cats in double figures. Jones with 16, Kid Gilchrist with 11. Lamb had 10. I believe all 10 of those were in the first half. Anthony Davis with a dozen. Marcus Teague with 13. Wilcher, 6. Vargas with a bucket. And Darius Miller with four points, just one field goal. Let me clarify that last comment before break about putting him in the front row. If, if Jones at uh, 252 pounds gathers himself off two feet and goes strong the basket, little Price at 175 pounds won't have a chance. Instead, Price, because he went so hard, Jones taking off of one foot, is almost flipped and almost comes up with an injury. So you got to protect yourself, be strong, and uh, be aggressive to the basket. Not so much as just take and push him to the front row, but attack the basket. Edwards can't get it to go. Wiltshire thought about it. And a nice follow by Darius Miller. Smith. And there is the first three of the night. For Radford, it comes on their 21st attempt. Yeah, Kyle Wiltshire just late, late coming out. You could hear Darius Miller yelling, switch, switch, switch. He stayed behind the defense, so stepping out over that pick and, and uh, adjusting that shot, or at least contesting that shot. Nice kick from Miller. And Wiltshire's got to be stronger with that basketball. Yeah, he's got to bend down. He's just too vertical. You can really use your leg strength. His arm, if you look at his arms, you know, they're not very strong, not much definition there. It'll come, but uh, where he's got his strength right now that he can really use is by bending his waist, bending his knees, and using the thighs, and the gluteus maximus, and all those muscles. Vargas had it knocked away. There's Miller just anticipating the missed shot, going up strong with two hands. Able to uh, hang on the rim there, too, to see no one was underneath him. So what called a technical. Wilcher took it inside to Vargas, and he couldn't hold it. Forty-four points, the Kentucky margin, as we approach the five-minute mark. Gerard, no place to go. Instead, he tried to create. Vargas called for the foul. And it looked like Gerard took one big step before drawing that contact. It looked like Eli did a good job of holding his ground, continued to move his feet. There was some contact, but it, like I said, almost looked like Gerard was the one that initiated it, took that extra step. Ten of the top 15 players on this Radford team, freshmen and sophomores. Mike Jones coming in and trying to reload the talent, change the mindset. I mean, you want to talk about a schedule now and getting some guys some uh, experience in the line of fire. Wow. After tonight, as we mentioned earlier, 
Radford and San Diego State are the only two teams in D1 that will have played seven games to this point in the young season. Plus some upcoming games. I mean, George Mason, a tournament team at Cincinnati, Charlotte, at Maryland. <laughs> Wilcher. Not only has Kentucky's on-ball defense been good, they've been able to extend it and play so well on the team defense that they've just really prevented Radford from getting into any kind of rhythm. That's right. Just about every shot they've taken has been contested. Oh. Set play. Kid Gilchrist got bumped, but got it back, and he'll go to the line. Kind of got hit across the face on the initial lob. Strong enough to go get it back and draw another foul. from the Kentucky crowd as Jared Polson checks into the lineup. Deron Lamb goes to the bench. His night in all probability finished with the 10 points and the five rebounds. And the Cats 21 of 23 at the free throw stripe. Smith off the screen. Good defense by Kid Gilchrist. And then Wilcher gets a hand on it. You could see Kid Gilchrist look at Darden that time to see what he was going to do. Finally, Darden just gave up because he knew if he'd gone for it, he was going to get dunked on. I mean, May said, you know, this is a 50-point game now. And you still got a couple of guys that have gotten all kinds of high school accolades out there busting it on the defensive end in a game whose outcome was decided long ago. Which is good. It's going to make them better players. But also, I think their teammates appreciate that because if you look at Eloy Vargas, even Kyle Wiltshire, those are players that are trying to earn some more minutes by their play out on the floor. So now they get some extended minutes and can show what they can do, especially Eloy Vargas. Michael Kidd Gilchrist now just one rebound away from a double-double. 15 points and nine boards. Here comes Wiltshire, maybe the lefty hook. No, he goes back right. But if you're in a situation, you're out there playing, you don't do anything, you know, on a defensive rebound or an offensive rebound maybe you should have gotten, it's real hard to complain about your playing time, so you got to perform out there. Darden off the screen, hit the long three. Two Kentucky walk-ons, Davis and Sam Malone, waiting to check in at the scorer's table. Nice offensive work by Eloy Vargas. That's a positive play. We've got our final media timeout. Kentucky on its way to 5-0. Tonight's Lexington Clinic, UK player of the game. Tight race between Terrence Jones and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, but how about number three, Kyle? Well, a good game by Terrence Jones. Six of 13 from the field. Made uh, half of his three-pointers of the two he attempted. Four of six from the line, eight rebounds, 17 points in 28 minutes. Also threw in one assist. And that's tonight's Lexington Clinic, UK player of the game. Lexington Clinic, your doctors for life. Michael Kidd Gilchrist, as we mentioned, just one rebound away from a double-double. 15 points, nine boards. Anthony Davis, 12 points, six rebounds. As Eloy Vargas 
goes to the free throw line. Tried to chase down the miss, couldn't do it. As we mentioned, number 13, Sam Malone. 5'11", freshman from up in Massachusetts. One of the walk-ons. In there along with Brian Long, number 32, 5'9", freshman from DeMont, New Jersey. Brian Long, his father actually uh, met Coach Calipari at the old five-star camp, became real good friends. There's Malone coming out with it. Let's move. How about that? Look at Calipari. A little inside-out dribble. John Calipari. <laughs> Over there laughing on a Wildcat bet you there. That's the thing I like. Kid Gilchrist is always a guy that's up leading the cheers for these guys. I mean, yeah, they got a bunch of talent, but I mean, it's a good group of guys. And you got to have that sort of uh, chemistry, Kyle, in order to do the things you think you can do with the talent. Well, you know as a player, too, that these guys, they may not be even getting many reps in practice and obviously not playing a lot of minutes in games, but they're out there working their tail off just as hard and trying to do anything they can to help the team. So when they do get a chance to play, you always want to be supportive and hope that they have success and have fun with it. Malone might have gotten a little too frisky there. And Paulson commits the foul at the other end. Again, Kentucky still playing with kind of a short bench. John Hood over there on the bench in street close. Still don't know whether he'll be back this year, whether he'll redshirt. And of course, Twani Beckham. There you see Hood. I was giving him a hard time before the game. You know, the managers are growing their beards for November for cancer awareness. I told John he had the best one, but he started growing his in like August. <laughs> Twani Beckham, of course, the transfer from Mississippi State, eligible at the end of the first semester. Vargas, they're trying to get Long a shot. You don't have to try to get Sam one. He'll get it out. <laughs> no, he's got that. He's got that first bucket out of the way now. He's got the pedal on the floor. Good defense by Vargas and Polson with a rebound, and that will do it. Bradford falls to three and four. The Cats go to five and zero oh with a 48-point win. We're back to wrap things up right after this.